Elder George Q. Cannon The day in which we live is one of the most important, if not the most important, that man has ever seen on the earth. It is the day in which the purposes of God shall be accomplished. The subject of unity cannot receive too much of our attention. Without unity of action in our temporal matters, our professions would be useless. The gospel brings salvation in every situation of life. It permeates the whole from the cradle to the grave. Therefore, I love it. It is the gospel carried out which has built this city and the various cities and settlements throughout this territory. Our president has given us many wise counsels which we have not yet carried out. No people on earth have been so wisely counseled with regard to the affairs of life as the Latter-day Saints. In many respects, we, as a community, are far from being united as we should be, considering our opportunities. Many who claim to be the Latter-day Saints are so blind to the interests of everything connected with the Kingdom of God that they are loud in their denunciations of the principle of cooperation. It is opposed by individuals in the city who ought to be the foremost to sustain it, but nevertheless it gradually gains influence and obtains more wide support from the masses of the people, who as a body are in favor of it. There is no man who has faith in the work of God who hesitates or feels doubtful respecting this principle. Yet it, like other true principles, has to meet with opposition. It has been the same with nearly every other principle the Lord has revealed. It is God's will that we should be united in all things. The Lord said through Joseph, Except ye are one, ye are not mine. I do not fear the pressure from the outside world. It will never triumph, because we are willing to be led and counseled by the servants of God. The world calls us foolish, and there is a class calling themselves Latter-day Saints who seem to have caught the same spirit. All the foothold that our enemies gain is the result of our want of unity. We have been advised in relation to our grain about how to direct our labors and with regard to the railroad from Ogden to this place. I have often regretted the indifference manifested by many parents with regard to the education of their children. Education is of incalculable benefit to those who use it aright. Education should not be confined to the schoolroom. Children should be trained to draw near to the Lord. When the father of a family is absent, the son should call the family together to family worship, and should ask a blessing on their food. Many of our young people are rude and unmannerly. A great deal of the proper training of children devolves upon mothers. Sons and daughters will eventually bless fathers and mothers who have been strict with them in wisdom. There is nothing more beautiful than well-ordered society. Elder Cannon continued to speak for some time interestingly on the importance of training the young.